Um, so the Zoom call listening to your uh, luncheon, Melissa and I want to thank you for having uh, myself. I also want to thank Beverly with the Hilton Garden and Renee for making the uh, sponsoring, uh, assisting and setting up the Zoom call. Um, also, Chris Steiger, I know I listened to you speak there, and I so much, Senator, appreciate you coming over today and advocating for the Mayor's Efficiency Task Force. Um, I sent Melissa a 34-page uh, outline that was uh, budget uh, documents out of the unified government that they were utilizing in this. And so we all know uh, about taxes and the need to make our county more competitive. As we go into a, certainly a new economic era internationally, Fairfax has for 100 years, and I think it's so historic, been so solid for Wyandotte County. And I want to say that off the bat. Uh, most of our major taxpayers in terms of Wyandotte County are in Fairfax. You guys have withstood the test of time through difficult business circumstances. And I want to acknowledge that uh, right off the bat. Uh, some of the most important corporations, not only for the region, uh, but certainly for the state of Kansas and the Midwest and the United States of America are located in Fairfax. That's something that you should all be very proud of. Uh, I know uh, in my current job, I do tax consulting uh, all over the United States and many states uh, doing valuation summaries. Um, I appear uh, consistently before the Board of Tax Appeals in the state of Kansas. I do work a lot in the Midwest, Missouri, Arkansas, and Iowa, and also uh, my largest client in Denver, Colorado. So uh, we all know that the tax bills come in November and May, and uh, there's this basic calculation. It's, it's actually very complicated. However, technology allows us to look at the document that you see, and I'm asking Melissa to go to page three now, which is a revenue a uh, neutral rate it should say you should see a formula on there and this is what's important for fairfax uh many of you i know uh, from working in the past i've assisted property owners and taxpayers in fairfax uh, to get uh, hearings and get their situations addressed in terms of valuation uh, you can overtax as a governmental entity and community we can raise taxes so high that like consumers uh, driving down a, a, a road, we've all uh, been there selecting which is the cheapest gas. Well, that occurs uh, in practice every day and every month and every year uh, that businesses select where to establish their business, where to retain their business enterprises, and where to expand their business enterprises. And so for that reason, uh, more than just discussion, um, in the economy of Wyandotte County, it's very important to have uh, folks like Chris and what he's talking about. Hopefully, we'll expand that group uh, to CFOs. I know for many years I worked with George Turner, who was the comptroller at GM, and uh, George had a different perspective in, in finance, uh, opposed certainly to uh, in, in juxtaposition to many of the government folks, and I often appreciated that because uh, George the shareholder was the corporations of General Motors and the shareholders of Wyandotte County uh, sometimes uh, were taxpayers who in some of these economic schemes were not always fairly represented. And I want to be candid about that because we're catching up now. So we've had a historic occurrence with the appraisal and appointment of a new appraiser in Wyandotte County. And many of you are probably hearing from your employees and your folks uh, who've received 40 to 50. One gentleman called, I examined his tax parcel. He received a $235,000 valuation increase on his home. So this is, this is serious. I mean, for, for many folks of, of looking at this, you know, that one uh, tax bill will increase his taxes almost $1,000 a month. And so he's a retired, living on a fixed income. It's a, it's a deal breaker for him. And so we have to pay attention to this. And I, I want to you know, point out to Mayor Garner and his, uh, his election. He hit the ground running hard. And he has told everyone on the group, go in and find how we can reduce these property taxes. Well, now 
as you see on the screen, this revenue neutrality rate calculator, it, the state law mandates that the mill levy be decreased. Even if you got a 50% increase in valuation on your home, it may not come down that much because the policymakers, which is the mayor and the 10 commission, set the mill levy rate. And so this is a, you know, in a, in a basic, in the most basic form calculation of taxes, I, I often use this with the boards I appear before an appeal. It's an algebraic equation. It's assessed valuation times mill levy equals total tax. So we can all remember when we were in algebra class, A times B equals C. Those are the variables. And when you raise one of the variables up 25%, the other variable has to come down in an equal amount or taxes are increased. It's very, very easy. A hundred times 10 is a thousand. So no matter if you're paying on a valuation of $10 million, and we have those, or a hundred thousand dollars on a house, your, if your hundred goes to a thousand, your 10 has to go to one, right? Or simpler, the, the, the variable the A value of A times value of B equals value of C. So when you change the V value for any of the variables, it'll impact C. Now, is this, is this simple enough for my, I'm trying to get it down to a level where it means the same for an industrial owner as it does a homeowner. And that's the fact. So, um, the platform that Mayor Garner and certain commissioners have put up is, okay, let's, let's go to C. If C equals a total tax of 54 million, and you'll see that on, on one of the next slides, let's see where our growth is occurring in the county in terms of revenue. Because you've got to remember, this isn't the only revenue. The, the system of the unified government is made up of over 37 revenue streams. And we're just talking about one. So uh, what we want to do in, in, at the instruction of the mayor is seek efficiency first and then strictly adhere to the state law and the formula of the revenue neutral and when we do that we're going to come up with a fair tax base for the whole county which is going to do what it's going to produce growth and i know there's some uh, gentlemen in there today that are, that are getting ready to cite a major company into into excuse me <coughs> into uh Wyandotte county and one of the things that they're looking at is cost comparison annually on taxes uh, between not only Wyandotte County and regionally, but really internationally. And so um, this is the sort of thing that's very serious. And, and with that, I know I'm talking to a very learned audience uh, here, and I appreciate that. So I'm going to conclude my comments by saying uh, you know, no matter what formula, and, and Melissa, I want you to feel free to email that document to all of your members so they can examine it at their leisure, and they'll see uh, some of the, you know, kind of tax inconsistencies in the present model. Very simply, you know, Mayor Garner was elected on a reform agenda, and he wants to reform it. He hasn't forgotten what he told taxpayers on the campaign trail and what he learned. Everybody wants a fair tax uh, system. The largest taxpayer in Wyandotte County for a residential taxpayer right now is $28,000 a year. A gentleman in western Wyandotte County is paying that on his house. Is that too high, too low? Well, I don't know. He thinks it's a little high, and I would tend to agree with him on a fairness basis. Um, the lower property tax payment of, of individuals uh, goes all the way down to 500, 400 bucks for a residential. So you're using the same services. So at any rate, I would stand for any questions that you have. And I thank you, Melissa. Does anybody have, I guess, so Doug, we're not gonna go through your PowerPoint, is that correct? You can if you want. I just, I knew you were running behind uh, with the, presentation so I gave you page three and seven that's the real nut but I know that you want to uh, these folks are all busy and and um, and I'm, I apologize I got a little <clears throat> case of a COVID more I'm going to be fine uh, 
probably much to the chagrin of uh, some of the unified government people, I am going to live. But, uh, I, I say that in joke. It's just I am very conscious having COVID, uh, full-blown COVID before. I did not want to negatively impact anyone, and so I'm strictly quarantined upon doctor's orders, but I'm very happy to be online with you today. So, um, Melissa, I think you, you showed them slides three, and if you go down uh, that, it talks about in, in a more expanded uh, role all the way to the end of that. Um, the other uh, slide is, is the, uh, slide 11, and you'll see some of the property tax trends. And I went ahead and put the unified government comments over on the left where they say the mill levy has been reduced by six mills between 2017 and 2019. Well, that should be followed up with the comment a six mill reduction is about a 15 to 18% reduction in this tax model. At the same time, the property values have gone up 65%. So you see, well, you know, some of this, you know, more than propaganda, I want to say, or or talking points from a government, you have to come back to an honest metric. And if, if folks are leaving your community because taxes are too high, that means there's better markets around you, right? So if I own a gas station on the northbound lane of 7th Street and I'm charging $8 a gallon for gasoline, and the guy in the South Belmont Lane is charging three dollars and ninety cents. I'm probably not going to be in business. Does that make sense? Yeah, Doug. I have a question. Yes. So the mill levy doesn't just include the unified government budget. Correct. It includes That's right. the school district and who else? It, it involves the community college, the school districts, and that's on. I put that on your slide. On uh, you can take it down. Let me find the page number for you. That's on slide uh, 19. So if you go to page 19, uh, that's Bonner Springs uh, School District, Edwardsville, uh, Bonner Springs, the cities, and then you have Kansas City, Kansas. Then you have Wyandotte County Unified Government County portion. And then you have the old, what they call the old city of Kansas City, Kansas portion. So, you know, generating those mills together, guys, when you look at the total mill levy, uh, the total mill levy average in Wyandotte County is 171, okay? To make a comparison, we're in a competing market with Johnson County, Kansas. Would everybody agree with that? If we go south over the county line, our first county is Johnson County. They have schools, housing, etc. Their mill levy in Johnson County is 102, okay? So if you're just, again, if you're buying services as a citizen, and, and one mill levy is 171 as an average, and you go across, in the case of Edwardsville, we really started to notice that when we built a lot of uh, industrial entities in Edwardsville, and um, I know Greg Kendall is there, and I appreciate the work of uh, his group always in attracting, because growing the community is great, and you grow it and you reduce the mill levy. I think since, I think my vision is Wyandotte County could have the lowest mill levy in the state of Kansas. That, that's possible. How do you do it? You commit to make a fair uh, development process to where you take down the mill levy in amounts like this revenue neutrality speaks of that the state law is. And so when you see that on slide uh, 19 and I I work with um, different retail commercial developers and they come in and they'll look at land in Lenexa and they say, Doug, the, the mill levy was 102 in Lenexa and, and right across the river as I went across the river now it's almost 180 over there. I mean, that's Edwardsville. It's, it's, it's one of the higher indexes for the reasons that you're looking at on table 19. So how do we get that down? And I think that's the commitment of the mayor to make it fundamentally more fair for everyone. But if the unified government's only 23% of this right. issue, yeah. how do you fix Re the other 77? Right. So revenue, revenue neutrality not only applies to the unified government, it applies to the community colleges, it applies to the school districts, it applies to everybody that's levying a, a mill uh, into the tax valuation process. So those budget forms are calculated, and this new law, which is the first full year 
the first four year tax uh, implementation of the Kansas state law. Uh, the state of Kansas guys, what has caused this is some counties just didn't, and, and I gotta say Wyandotte County for 15 years was never in compliance with state law with their tax abstract. So do we, we understand what we're talking about here, right? We're always asking for General Motors, Certainty, and the large corporations to pay taxes, okay? And then folks complain about, you know, how their locations are arrived at. Well, get down into it deeper and say, we want everyone to pay a fair amount of tax. <laughs> and, and with that, we don't care if your valuation's 200 million, we want the mill levy to be fair uh, for everyone. And so as you grow your tax base, and in, in your valuation increases and we wind up county and, and really do a lot to the work of Greg Kendall. I want to acknowledge that in his group. Uh, we have had extraordinary over $290 million in new valuation. Well, if we don't lower the mill levy at all, then there's no benefit for having that. Okay, so we're on the same page, okay? Okay, let me see if anyone has any questions and I'll uh... I'll communicate them to you. Tell me, and I yeah. hope everyone yeah. can hear me. Is anyone in the group? Joe Bod has a question. You're probably yeah, not Joe. surprised. Actually, I have two questions. Number one, I'd like a copy of the work that you've done. We'll send so, that out. This. Uh, that's an out yeah, we'll send out your presentation. You ask for a copy of your presentation. That's great. Yeah, that's why I already emailed it. And um, I'm sure sorry about the Zoom technical uh, difficulties, but Melissa, you made a heroic effort to make this happen, and I appreciate that. <laughs> we tried. The other question okay. I have, uh, he has one more, just a sec. is uh, the star bonds, and I was a commissioner at the time when we put all that into place and the legends, and one of the promises that we made was, as commissioners, that when no star bonds were paid off, it would go to reduce property taxes. I suspect that none of that has ever went, but maybe that, you know more than I do. Yeah. Did any of it Joe, to reduce taxes? Joe, let me, let me, I, I know exactly what you're saying, Joe, and I, I agree with your question that has not happened. And that's one been one of the big, I know a lot of folks at City Hall, when I appear at meetings, and it's frequently on behalf of uh, my customers, large base consumers, developers, uh, large parcel holders. Hey, everybody wants fair treatment. Joe said it exactly right. When Wyandotte County had nothing before the legends and the sales tax base was built, the promise was to drag a historically high tax base, tax property tax district down. And we're, we made a little bit of progress and then we stopped. And so uh, most folks are, are very surprised to know because you see in budget documents that the general fund budget of the city of Kansas, Kansas and, what, and the unified government is $365 million. The county is another $184 million approximately in the new proposed budget. But the all funds budget is $1.7 billion. How can that be? Because <laughs> we only have $165,000. Well, it's this phenomena that Joe's talking about. When Joe was a commissioner, and we worked with Joe when we were recruiting the Kansas Speedway, and he did a marvelous job, and so did the commission. And many other private sector folks uh, helped us uh, accomplish this for the county. Um, we had limited options in revenue. Now, just like what Joe is intimating, and, and Chris Steininger can uh, speak volumes about this, uh, as that district expanded, we we pledged at the time to reduce the property taxes. Well, new people got elected, people forgot, folks wanted to do different stuff. And, we and, have a, and, and don't so forget that, the that's pilot, uh, Sorry, Doug, don't forget the pilot tax on our... Oh, let me get started. So sorry, you remember what I told you about the other revenue? So let's stop. You know, that's exactly right. And, and the mayor has called for a reduction in the pilot as well. Uh, some of our businesses that uh, I can give you some examples on square footage, and it's a matter of public record because it's been through court uh, transactions with the state. Here's an example, and people will fall out of your chairs when we tell you this. We have a commercial uh, owner of, of the property, Wyandotte County, for active business, okay, and it's in western Wyandotte County. He's leasing the space at $15 a square foot. 
his tenant is paying, that's at the lease, the base lease rate. His tenant pays the $15 and then he pays the property taxes per square foot. Guess what they are square foot? Eight, $18. So he, this, this, is the, this is the sort of dysfunction that occurs over a 15-year trend, okay? In, in our personal life, this is like saying, well, I, I, got, the, I, I got the house for $100,000, but I got to pay $10,000 a year in property taxes. You see, nobody wants to do that. On a 15-year mortgage, you paid $150,000 in taxes, and you paid your house off for a hundred. And that's why folks are making the, what I tell you, the logical choices, uh, because I work all over, but my heart is always in Wyandotte County. I always want to see Wyandotte County do the best. I want to lower the property tax mill levy and the cost of government for everyone. We want to take the work that Joe Vaught and Bill Clarkson and the Dunn family and everyone that invested in Wyandotte County, David Block, David Christie, Fred Ball, General Motors, CertainTeed, uh, certainly all of the companies that have major investment in Fairfax, okay? Make it pay off for them. Make Wyandotte County better. Study the information that I've given you. It's uh, all factual and documented. And, and you can see where the variances of the county, uh, where they try to talk about property, as you said, Melissa, but then they don't talk about pilot. Okay, so when you're paying a million dollars a month, I have one client that pays a million dollars a month to the BPU. Okay, he's paying $185,000 a month on that bill into the pilot fund. Which is payment okay? in lieu of taxes. <laughs> That's right, the anyway. payment in lieu of taxes. And to Joe's point, that as that pilot revenue comes in, it's filling up that bucket of water necessary to operate the government. Lower the stream of the property taxes to give a guy a break, okay? All right, Doug. Well, I think we'll wrap it up right here. Um, Thank you. I, I appreciate at least we and, got part of this presentation out there, and I will send out, we'll recap all of this and send it out to everyone. And, and I'll Melissa, I, thank you so much. And please feel free to, to forward that email on to every one of your members. So they can look at it. I think it'll be of interest to them. Okay. All right. Thanks, Doug. Have a great day. Bye bye. Okay, bye.